Hi everyone. Today's like a special day. I took a day for me. I am going on a date. Out of like a hundred guys, one of them actually knew how to ask a girl on a date. I'm like really shocked. I got dressed in 12 minutes. It takes me, me um, <clears throat> so much longer to get dressed. I'm not putting on my seatbelt. Oh my God, I'll probably be arrested. <laughs> So I am brave in that brave new world again. I haven't gone on a date in two years. My car's still on the lift. So uh, I better hang up for a moment. Okay, I'm back in the saddle again. I have to remember all the dating rules. People believe me. There's so many dating rules. You don't tell them where you live. You don't let them know really what you're driving. Uh, you don't get intoxicated. Bring your own money. Yes. Okay, stupid Medicare keeps calling me. Robo calls. Dang. I want to hate Hi, everyone. It's Deborah. It is late at night. I never do videos this time at night, but I wanted to let you know how my date went. It's the first date in two years. It was wonderful, magical. He held the door open for me. Uh, he was polite. He didn't talk about anything that was off color. A lot of times I go, on, I've gone on dates and the guys talk about things they shouldn't be talking about. So I had a great time. Uh, but on the way out the door, I spilt a whole cup of coffee. So I had to clean that up. <laughs> and I went to work last night. Uh, my boss said if I work one day a month, I can uh, stay, that I won't get terminated. So very dehydrated. I'm drinking everything in the house. So If you've been watching me for a long time, you know that my dream is to get a house in the country. Uh, and he showed me his house in the country. He took a barn and refurbished it. I just about fell out of the chair. He thought that I was too highfalutin for him. And I assured him, I'm nothing like that because people have a tendency to judge you by what you look like. Well, when I told him that, you know, what my life has been like and what my life was as a child, he was very, very shocked that I'm nothing like I perceived on the dating site. So that was nice. Now I'm very, very tired. That's why I'm doing this video. Um, so, when I left the date, I went to the riverboat, and I left the date after like two and a half hours. It felt like only 15 minutes. We never ran out of anything to talk about. He was a great conversationalist. He didn't talk, he didn't ask me any questions that made me uncomfortable. Uh, he did, you know, maybe want to ask why after 40 years, I'm dissolving a marriage, and I told him, I said, well... The recession back in 2007 and 8 did us in. Uh, money does terrible things in a marriage. Well, he lost his wife to cancer, to smoking. And I lost my dad to the same thing. Uh, so I went into the grocery store and this elderly man walked up to me. Now, I don't miss a thing when I'm out. I notice everybody. I don't know their name, but I can tell you how they were walking, what they look like. So this elderly man, which I had seen earlier in the day, walked up to me and he goes, were you just at the riverboat? I go, yes. He goes, you left your jacket. So I'm already exhausted. So, and I haven't been to the grocery store in a whole month, but my ex had given me a little bit of money to go shopping bless his heart. Um, so I was at the grocery store and had to turn around and go all the way back to the riverboat and get 
my jacket. Now, this jacket means a lot to me. It was a Chico jacket. If you've ever bought anything at Chico's, triple the price. <laughs> yeah, triple the price, people, because that's... But, yeah. Uh, so, I went and got my jacket. Then, when I got back home, uh, alarms was going off. Buzzing, buzzing, but And I go, did I accidentally touch the keys? And maybe the alarm on the car that my ex is letting me drive because mine's on the lift. So I kept pushing the button. Now I realize it's smoke alarms going off. And now I've got, I activated the alarm on my ex's caddy. So I had to call the property manager, had to help him down and up. And then, you know, I turned off the, that alarm on the key ring. Um, so then I had to carry in the groceries up those stairs. Uh, let me tell you what, I was exhausted, you know, and then a friend wants to come over and I'm going, in the last two weeks, I've been to three birthday parties. My, my exes, my granddaughters, and then mine the other, just the other night on um, my birthday. So I'm like exhausted just from that. And I've got the four doctor's appointments coming up. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So I'm like, my housework is just not a priority right now. And like I said, I did go to work last night. Those four hours, I love seeing everybody at work. And those four hours kind of like, oh my God, drained me. But I went, when I was in the grocery store, everybody came up to me. Are you the girl with the white hair? Did you dye your hair? Are you that person? And I go, yeah. And I got a lot of compliments. So that's nice. Okay. So back to the doctor. I can deal with back surgery. That That's nothing. I can deal with hip surgery. But this mass in my abdomen, that is what is hurting. That is what I'm concerned about. So I was hoping my granddaughter would go with me. Uh, just to be in the room. So I, every time I eat something, it's got that full feeling. And now I've had fibroid tumors taken out. I've had a tummy tuck. I also had a huge tumor. Uh, yeah, the, when I had the uh, t fibroid tumors taken out, I had a, what's called a myomectomy. They only went in there and cut out the tumors but left the uterus. For some reason, I thought the uterus was very um, instrumental in having orgasms, you know. Um, so I wanted to keep that. So then, so they just took the tumors out and left a couple in my uterus that they couldn't get to. Yeah, I almost bled to death on the operating table because my doctor said, uh, you are one of those strange Cases I've only read about in the medical books. I had a major artery running through my abdomen and I lost so much blood. I was, I don't know if you've ever lost blood like that, but it, it, um, I, I lost energy for weeks to try to get that back. So, uh, and then I had about four years ago, I had a huge, mass in my ovary it was a cyst and I didn't even know I had that but my doctor when he was doing the internal exam you know how went with their fingers or whatever I went "Ooh," he goes oh you're going to come in tomorrow for a sonogram and then he said he saw it so he took that out now that surgery was so much more uncomfortable than um than my hip or my back surgery you know I did not tell this date today all these medical issues because he would run, but he, he would run away from me fast. Uh, but we did have one thing in common: he had had a, his right hip replaced, and um, so I am more worried about this mass in my abdomen than anything else because it hurts when I'm laying in the bed. I can feel something. And it, it just hurts. 
it, it's now overriding the pain in my hip and my back. And I'm going, oh my God. So I thought maybe my granddaughter could go with me, but she has to work. So it looks like I'll have to do this alone. Uh, so uh, my birthday, my ex took me to the best restaurant in Fredericksburg. And I, I had a wonderful time. It was so wonderful that I cried on the way home. I sure did. So, uh, I don't know. I've been lucky to be on this earth for 65 years. I am so lucky. I could have died a hundred times in all the accidents I've had. God wants me on this planet for something. I don't know what. I don't know what, but, uh, let me tell you what, when you are, when you're, trying to figure out what's wrong with you or you're getting ready to have diagnostic tests. It's a little scary. Now my little sister probably has surgery. She seems like two or three doctors a week. She has Meniere's and it's totally just changed my little sister. I don't know if you know anybody who has Meniere's, but it, it, it makes her fall down. She gets bruises. Plus she had a gastric bypass and, uh, I have two sisters who've had that and, uh, it caused, it causes a lot of other issues. Let me tell you what, the doctors who do these gastric bypasses, they don't tell you that they should, because they should talk to two of my sisters. Um, yeah, because they don't get the nutrients, you know, and they have my, like, my little sister has to get iron infusions. I don't know if I'm saying that right. They have to pump iron back in her. Um, so, uh, I don't like talking about my medical situation because I know there's so many people out there dealing with, because we're like baby boomers. There's so much of us that are over 60 now that are having medical issues. I remember somebody from my high school said on Facebook about 10 years ago, get ready to have lots of operations. And I go, what the hell is he talking about? Well, now I know. Now I know, uh, and people still don't understand when I am, I get tired after, I'm only good for four hours. For four hours, I can do whatever I need to do, and then I crash, and I crash bad. Uh, uh, so, I'm gonna go to all these doctors next week. I'm gonna keep you all informed, and then, just in case I don't survive one of these surgeries, I'm going to go and be with my friends in the DR. Um, like I said, I have the free airline miles and she doesn't charge me much. In fact, she probably, she lets me pay when I can, you know, she doesn't expect a lot of money. All of, no, she's not like that. She just sent me the most beautiful birthday card. So I am so ashamed of my house and I've never, I've never had to deal with this. Uh, it looks like I'm a hoarder. Uh, I know at Christmas I got a little carried away cause I did, was able to buy a lot of stuff at a big discount cause the store was going out of business. But um, I did mail off two boxes today had to wait till I got some extra money to do that. But I am getting ready to fill out the paperwork to go live possibly in one of those homes where you got like maybe 600 square feet and you've got the little pool chain by the toilet. I mean, that's what I'm looking, that's where I'm, I'm going with this. Um, you know, and that, and I can ride my golf cart from this facility. I won't tell you what it is in case there's stalkers out there. But uh, I can ride my golf cart there. And I'm old enough. And I could have moved there three years ago. So, yeah, I'm thinking about just moving into the old folks' home. But let me tell you what. The guy I was on a date with today. Oh, my God. He looks like Johnny Carson. Um we hit it off. I mean, I'm telling you, we hit it off. 
uh, he wanted a kiss. Now, you know, you all know I don't like them slobbery ass kisses. You know, if I don't know the guy. But he kissed me with his mouth shut. But the whole time I get in the car and I'm like stunned. And I'm going, coronavirus. Oh, my God. You know, people, you can't, you know, that is now going to be in everybody's speech. It's going to be on everybody's agenda. I'm thinking, oh, God, you know, because I was sick, very sick for two months. I'm not two months, but two to three weeks in January. But. Yeah, and I called, I FaceTimed my brother, and his wife is uh, ill. I said, well, maybe I should not visit you. I, I don't need to be, I don't need to get a cold on top of this, because they will not operate if you have a cold, you know. So thanks for letting me ramble with you guys. Uh, I'll keep you posted about this gyno appointment. You know, I hate spreading my legs. Ah. Oh. Not always. <laughs> All right, bye.